we are now broadcasting and recording. Uh, so a very good evening to all of you uh, and thank you for joining us for this very special online launch of our new Devan website, marking the culmination of an ambitious project combining Hafiz, Goethe, and a host of outstanding contemporary poets and translators from across the world. I'm pleased to have with you, me uh, this evening, albeit virtually, my, well, hopefully my co-editor, although he seems to have the same problems joining that I ha just had myself, but Bill Swainson will hopefully join us very, very soon. Um, and uh, some of uh, the poet contributors and essayists, including Juma Khanem, Murad Balguti, Tara Bergin, George Chertis, and Gernja Esman. I'm stressing that this is only a selection of the contributors, as I hope that by showcasing this fantastic sample of a new divan, we will whet your appetite for more, and you will explore the other poems on the new website in your own time. A few bits of housekeeping. Um, we live in these very strange virtual worlds where housekeeping has to be done. Uh, I'm not pointing towards the fire exit, uh, rather than I'm telling you all that uh, uh, please uh, to mute yourself, um, uh, that uh, you can ask questions and those questions are very welcome, but please do that in the chat function of Zoom. We will uh, keep you all muted unless you are speaking or you are asking uh, a question. Uh, and uh, so relax, make yourself um, comfortable, pour yourself a drink, I wish I could, um, and enjoy the next 60 or so minutes of discussion and poetry. To kick us off, I'm delighted that Nargis Farzad is definitely here already. I, I've seen her. Um, uh, Nargis is a renowned Hafiz scholar and senior fellow of Persian literature and poetry at SOAS, University of London. And Nargis, could you please read a Hafiz Ghazal for us? After all, he is where this story begins. Okay, over to you. With absolute pleasure. Thank you, Barbara, and thank you for organizing such a lovely uh, event. And um, can't say good evening. I think everybody is here from different time zones. So good um, Wednesday. And I was thinking, you know, of course, I have to do uh, make your wish open the divan of Hafez at random and look for a poem. So I thought I might actually not do that and have one that I've already selected. I want to, to read you a poem, perhaps about the eternal lovers, the rose and the nightingale, Golo Bol Bol, the seashore and the waves, the moth and the flame. But I thought I'll read you something that has a sense of optimism in this bizarre world we live in. So I'm reading you this uh, Ghazal. یوسف گم گشته باز آید به کنان غم مخور کلبه احزان شود روزی گلستان غم مخور ای دل غم دیده حالت به شود دل بد مکن بین سر شوریده باز آید به سامان غم مخور دور گردون گر دو روزی بر مراد ما نرفت دایما یکسان نباشد حال دوران غم مخور بهار عمر باشد باز بر تخت چمن چتر گل در سر کشی ای مرغ خوشخان غم مخور ای دل ای دلر سیل فنا بنیاد هستی برکند چون تو را نو هست کشتیبان ز طوفان غم مخور در بیابان گر به شوق کعبه خواهی زد قدم 
سرزنش ها گر کند خار مقیلان غم مخور آن مشون نومید چون واقف نعی از سر قیب باشدن در پرده بازی های پنهان غم مخور گرچه منزل بس خطرناک است و مقصد ناپدید هیچ راهی نیست کان را نیست آیان غم مخور حافظا حافظا در کنج فقر و خلوت شبهای تار تا بود وردت دعا و پرس قرآن غم مخور and that is really just saying all will be good do not despair how wonderful uh, and we just need that <laughs> to hear that so much these in these very strange very strange times thank you nargis for reading this beautiful um, ghazal let me tell you uh, all about the origins of this historic project the original dialogue started in the early 19th century when the german poet johann wolfgang von goethe was given by his publisher, in fact, um, the first German translation of the Divan by the 14th century Persian poet Hafiz. One of these poems from that collection you have just all heard now Nargis recite. So occasionally publishers do sensible, good things, useful things. Um, so Goethe opened this book having been fascinated by the Middle East and the Quran for almost all his adult life. But he opened this book, this translation of Hafiz's Divan, and he was immediately enthralled. He called Hafiz his twin and decided to write a Divan of his own. Five years later, Goethe published his Westöstlicher Divan, 12 books of poems, or he called them Namer, like um, a nod towards the Persian, and added explanatory notes. Goethe hoped that this lyrical dialogue would continue, that there would be divans of the future. So we, Ginkgo, decided to take him up on his challenge and in 2015 announced that we would produce a new divan. And last year, 200 years exactly since the original publication of Goethe's West Eastern Divan, we published a new divan, a collection of poems and essays that comprises works from more than 50 poets and scholars from the Middle East, Europe, and the Americas. The project went on tour last year across the UK and culminating, culminated in a festival of music, art and poetry at the Barnboim Said Academy in Berlin. And the website we are launching tonight, we hope, will be its lasting legacy and an invitation to continue the dialogue started by Goethe and Hafez two centuries ago. My co-editor, I'm so pleased that I just saw that uh, Bill Swainson um, uh, has uh, joined us. Uh, he's there, thank goodness. <laughs> I couldn't, uh, I was getting worried that I would <laughs> do the whole entertainment tonight on my own, but Bill is here. Bill, of course, is a brilliant editor and expert on literary translation, and he will, in a few minutes, um, uh, talk about how he and I commissioned the poets. But we wanted to start by um, actually giving you a taster of that poetry uh, that we commissioned. But uh, but we wanted to start with Nujum Al Khanem. And I don't know, is Nujum with us already? Otherwise, we. We'll go straight over to Bill and uh, we'll take um, uh, Nujum 
hopefully when she has joined us. I mean, isn't it typical? We did a dress rehearsal with Nujum yesterday and it worked perfectly. But now, of course, it, the gremlin of Zoom has, uh, has uh, taken her away. Anyway, oh, there she is, Nujum. How wonderful. <laughs> I, I just saw her um, come in, so I'm, I, I hope if you can unmute yourself, uh, Nujum, then uh, we will hand over because um, Nujum actually um, uh, was one of the uh, commissioned uh, poets uh, contributing to a new divan. And she responded to the book of Suleika in Goethe's uh, West Eastern Divan a very special part of the West Eastern Divan because it's a love duet between the poet Hatem and his beloved Suleika. So um, we thought that uh, Nujun could uh, uh, read uh, her poem uh, in the Arabic and for the first time tonight uh, we will show off the new um, uh, features on the website. Uh, so while Nujum is reading the original Arabic, Claire, our Zoom master, my colleague Claire Roberts will um, actually um, show you the English text uh, and we have a very special um, feature at the end. But now over to Nujum and I'm so pleased to see you. Um, uh, so uh, please read, tell us something about the Crimson Shades and then read the Arabic original, please. Hello everyone, thank you uh, Barbara uh, for this kind invitation and congratulations uh, for the uh, new website. I hope that everyone is going to enjoy it. Okay, uh, I'm going to read the, um, the poem and when I say ha, that means Hatim, and when I say za, that means Zulaikha. So uh, I will make it easier for Claire to follow or with the English uh, uh, version. Ha. Wa in saraqat Venus minna mawaidana, wa abatha al mushtari bitawali'ina. فلن ندعهما ينشدان افتراق دروبنا سنترك للأقدار وردة الأمنيات لربما خان السدنة الأعراف من أجلنا أيثما نصعد إلى الله الذي سيمنحنا بابا ومفتاح نجاة ويغفر لنا لأننا نريد أن نحبط من جنته ربما لا بأس إن سقطنا مرة زاء رحلت مقتفيا مزامير هيليوس غسلت الطرقات بالملح لألا يبقى من رائحتنا شيء عالق في الحجر بكيت عليك حتى احترق قلبي بجرح الغياب ورغم سطوة الحزن خبأت لعودتك قوافي حافظ وظل الأنجم القرمزية تركت النوافذ مشرعة تحت سماء أيلول وحين لم تأتي تعلمت مناداة الريح عشقت الحب في الانتظار وكان لسع الثلج الحارق على وجنتي يشفي قلبي البدر الذي أمرضه شوقي أصبح بيتا ألوذ إليه والمفازات أرض أحلامي أما المضائق أما مضائق البلدان فكانت الجسر الذي سأعبره لأصل إلى قلبك كنا سنفتح قمصان المساءات ونتداوى بالقبلات لكنك لكنك أخذت الأناشيد من يديها وبقيت هناك في البحور الطويلة تختبر وقع أوزانها وتقلب الموجة رحلت في الرحيل وصار قدر العشق بيننا هو الفراق حا تعالي 
تعالي لليلة اكتمال القمر نفترش في ظله جزيرتنا ونتكئ على رياح الجنوب ستدوخ أقدارنا من شدة عشقنا وتمنحنا ساعة أو إثنتين نتذوق في غفلتها القبلة فوق القبلة وربما نسيتنا حيثما نحن لألف ليلة وليلة أخرى هكذا كقبلة الغيمة للغيمة نشتعل كلما اقتربت أرواحنا وينهمر المطر على العالم كالقبلة فوق القبلة ذا نرش الجنيات لتهربنا كوزن في قصيدة إذا فتكتفي هي بحكاية لنا في كتابها ونكتفي نحن بالقبل فوق القبل أي ريح نرش أشرقية أم غربية تلك التي ستختارنا حا بل ربما شمالية أو كيمياء يبدعها الله لنا لنسقط أولا في الليل كالنجمة خلف النجمة ثم نكون رمادها وسر أسرارها فالعشق موت محتمل وما أحلاه إن كان لنا فيه نصيب Thank you so much, uh, Nujum. This was utterly wonderful. And to show off, um, we now show Dorian Nechirfa's English version, which you just saw on the screen, but now we're going to play you her rendition of The Crimson Shade. Thievery. Venus should see those who are our destiny. If Jupiter draws mischief on us furtively, should those odds come to pass, we will not permit their rude attempts to split our paths. No. Upon those fates we will bestow the rose of hope. For who is to say that the shrine's custodians may not, for our sake, choose to betray the old ways. While we soar to God, who will gift us not only a door and a key of redemption, but also give his forgiveness, should we wish our descent again from heaven. Perhaps this single fall will be permissible. S. You voyaged following Helios's sands. No scent of us remained on the stones once your salt had scrubbed the path. I wept until the gashes of absence charred my heart. Despite my overwhelming grief, I concealed the verses of Hafiz in the crimson shades of the stars. Under September skies, I threw windows wide. When you still didn't arrive, I turned to those winds and cried. Oh, and as I waited, I fell in love with love. I willed snow's cheek scorch to heal my heart. Now I make my home in the full moon infected as it is by my desire pangs and my dreams rest in desert clefts. The sand bridges which led to distant lands always carried me to your warm heart when we longed to unbutton evening's blouse and close each other in kisses from our red mouths until you filched the hymns from their grip and chose to rest instead in the ocean's lyric depths, testing each metric constriction, flicking through ripples. Within the flight, you flew away. Within the crossing, you crossed astray. 
until you turned your face away and our love was destined to division and disarray. Return for a night as the moon turns full and you and I will lie in our island in shadows of moon gloom. We lean in southerly, our desires so strong that even our fates will spin dizzy, allowing us secret hours to sip, kiss, over kiss. Our mouths will mimic the embrace of clouds. The closer our souls, the more rain rushes down, each droplet a kiss, falling into a kiss. Might we bribe the fire dunes to hide us in a poem, like meter, a rhythm? Might our myth, if written in the book, be to their satisfaction? Might we allow ourselves contentment to sip kisses on kisses? Which wind might we bribe? Which breeze will conceal us, the easterly or the westerly? Maybe the north wind or some secret chemistry created for us by God will permit us to plummet first into the darkness as star after star falls forth from the night sky that we might be their ashes and their secret of secrets for falling in love is a probable death. Yes, how beautiful it would be if that were to become our destiny. Nujum, what did you think? Did, did Dorian uh, do your poem justice in the English version? Nujum, you have to unmute yourself. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Dorian looks fabulous. <laughs> and uh, uh, it is very funny that uh, when, when I read the first time, when I read uh, uh, the uh, was uh, the East, uh, uh, in Arabic, it, uh, it was translated to the Eastern Divan by the Western author, Diwan Sharq al Mu'allaf al Gharbi. When I read it in the 80s, uh, you know, I, I felt like there is this distance between me and the book because it was very uh, classic, very romantic, and it was uh, really uh, lyrical. And now what is happening with my poem, with Laura, <laughs> Laura she uh, translated the, the poem into a very lyrical uh, style. Uh, it sounds, I don't know how it sounds uh, to you. Uh, for me, uh, you know, like, uh, I, I, I hear it with wonder. <laughs> <laughs> how wonderful. <laughs> well, Actually, um, uh, that is uh, the perfect time to hand over to Bill to say something about the commissioning process because, I mean, uh, you performed a miracle there. So, I mean, over to you. How did you do it? Hi, Barbara, and hello, everyone. Um, it's a real treat to be here. And... I think the best thing to say is I've got a lot, I've got a list um, that's been whittled down over a number of days to be now only eight or 10 points to be dealt with in four minutes. So I'm going to collapse those four points into one because the whole project has been about collaboration and what you can do when you work with other people and you, you, you can, um, if you like, enjoy and go further on by by their energy as they can go further using yours and this project wouldn't have been possible without the advisors for example Najuma, uh, for example and Nagas Farsad who advised us on 
Farsi and the wonderful people at um, Banipal magazine, Margaret Obank and Samuel Shimon, as well as our major advisors like Joachim Sartorius, the German poet, and um, Michael Schmidt, publisher of Carcanet in Manchester. We shamelessly took advice wherever we could find it. And as a result of, of that work, we're able to put together over, and we had time to do it over about three years, to find 24 poets writing in a variety of languages, the three from the East being, of course, Arabic, um, Farsi, um, and um, Turkish, and then eight from of the uh, of Western languages um, and European languages at that. Um, and we looked for poets who would either knew the work of Goethe and were interested in um, his West Eastern Divan. For example, the German poet Durst Grunbein tells me he never leaves home without his first edition copy of um, the uh, Westerschelke Divan. Um, but we also went to poets who didn't necessarily know um, the work of Goethe, but were interested in the project. In the same way with the, um, with the English language poets, we went to some poets who knew the languages they were working with. For example, um, Jamie McKendrick is a leading translator from Italian into English and a wonderful poet himself. Similarly, Fadi Judah translates uh, Palestinian American, translates from Arabic. Um, and we were able to ask them to engage with the project with a direct knowledge of the language they were translating from. Others, we had some knowledge um, of the language, but were not experts. And others still had no knowledge of the language, but were interested in the project. For example, Paul Farley, um, who is a presenter of the Echo Room on BBC Radio 4, the poetry program, um, worked with Raoul, Raoul Schrott, but he couldn't have done the work he did on the poem without the bridge translation provided by um, Sean Whiteside, leading, leading translator from the German. Um, and, sorry, there's a message coming, but I can't see it. I, I, am I loud enough? I hope so. Um, he couldn't have done that work without Sean's little translation. The same is true of Maureen Freely working with the Turkish of Gonja Usman, who we'll hear from later, um, provided a text that Joe Shapcott could, could work with. And we were as concerned that the, the poets who were providing these English versions and translations um, should have the freedom to respond and create a new poem in its own right. We were as interested in, in the poet's response to the challenge of this, of this work, to engaging with another culture and language, as we were with trying to provide, if you like, um, um, an, a, an academically precise version. Um, the, some of the best poetry in English was a result of um, English courtiers and diplomats going to Italy during the Renaissance and coming back, having tried to negotiate the divorce of Henry VIII and Catherine, and, um, Catherine of Aragon, coming back with Italian Renaissance poetry, which fed into English culture and transformed what it was possible to do in English poetry. And we've seen changes like that happening in the past. So this was Yes, it was a co-exotic attempt, but um, I think we've just seen with Najum's poem and with Dorian Negriefer's recreation in English, responding imaginatively to the literal translation provided, um, can tell you something about what we were trying to achieve. And that is my four minutes, and I think I've stolen one, so I will stop there. 
I think that was a, a minute well uh, stolen. So thank you, Bill, for giving us an insight on how a new divan came about. But of course, tonight is all about the poems uh, and the poets. Uh, so let's hear more from them. Uh, and uh, just a small reminder to our audience, you can submit questions in the chat uh, and I will do my best uh, at, uh, to ask them at the end. But now we would like to hear some more poetry. And we am absolutely thrilled and delighted that we have one <clears throat> pair of um, uh, sort of uh, original poet uh, uh, and his poetic translator um, uh, with us tonight with uh, the Palestinian poet Morit Barghouti joining us from Morit, where are you? In Amman or are you in, in Beirut or uh, where are you hiding? Or should we not tell? No, no, no. I mean, I'm in Jordan. Hi, ba Barbara. Wonderful to see you. And, and I'm delighted that you are there. And um, Happy to you, see you. Uh, you responded to the theme of the tyrant, uh, which, of course, in uh, Hafiz's time, was uh, uh, Tamerlan, um, or, yeah. or, and in Goethe's time was Napoleon, uh, but in our time, well, we, are, we have plenty of po um, uh, tyrants. And, uh, many of them, many of them. Too many. <laughs> and um, and you, your wonderful uh, uh, poem uh, was um, uh, rendered in English by George Shirtes, um, uh, who is also with us tonight. George, I'm so pleased to see you, and uh, I hope you're keeping well. Um, and the, um, so we will give the audience an idea about um, how it worked. So, Murit will start with um, uh, reciting your poem, uh, in the original Arabic, and then George uh, will read his um, uh, version, his English version of the obedience of water. So, Maurit, off you yes, go. Barbara, thank you very much for having me, and congratulations for the website. I'm sure it will be helpful and uh, uh, very good to generations to come. Wonderful. And uh, I will start by reading my poem in Arabic. Its title is Ta'atul Ma, The Obedience of Water. Kam saharan, wa kam maharatan, wa kam takhassusan, wa kam taraddudan, wa tadhiya, tahtaju, in aradta sun'a alatin rakhisatin, aw ghaliya, wa kullu ma tahtajuhu, إذا أردت صنع طاغية أن تنحني لا ليس خرتيتا وليس معجزة بل ربما يشبهني ويشبهك وهذه ليست كما حسبتها أضلافه بل إنها أظافر عادية كأنها أظافري كأنها أظافرك نعم وليست هذه حوافرة بل إنها حذاؤه مقاسه ثمانية أو تسعة كما أظن نعم ووزن جسمه ليس كما تراه نصف طن بل مثلنا سبعون قل تسعين كيلوغرام وليس هذا قرنه بل أنفه أنفه المرفوع واثقا حتى وإن أصابه الزكام نعم وقد يصيبه الزكام نعم وقد يصيبه كما يصيبك النزيف هو لا يأتي من أكتاف الغيمات إلى كرسيه بل من أكتافك أنت وأكتافي ويدلي رجليه على سرج الوقت وأؤكد أن له رجلين فقط لا ست يهوى المرآة وتهوى أن تهواه ويهواها ويحب القانون فلا يقتل نفسا أو يهدم بيتا أو يذبح بضعة آلاف إلا بالقانون وفي عهده 
تبدو الآمال إهانات لذكاء الناس فتومض كي تخبو وتعود تضيء بلا سبب معروف يترجم ارتعاشه صلابة مهما جرى لأنه يريد منا أن نكون ماء آراؤنا رأي الإناء يريد أن يرى ركودنا المقيمة دائما في قاع كوب وننحني إذا انحنى الإبريق في يده ونحبس الكلام في الحلوق لكننا حين انتوينا كلنا ما ينتويه الماء علت يداه باستغاثة أخيرة واستغرب الغرق Thank you. Um, it contains one of my favorite lines, um, uh, but I will not betray which one it is. Um, but George, um, I was, um, of course, saying that um, a Palestinian poet knows a lot of uh, tyrants, but you, are uh, Hungarian by birth uh, and you experience and your family experience lots of tyrannies as well so you might have had a particular affinity to Murid's um, uh, obedience of water. Um, uh, please could you read your English version of Murid's wonderful poem for us? The obedient water. How many nights of art, close study, hesitation and sacrifice, at little or great expense, do you need to invent the simplest of gadgets? All you need to invent a tyrant is a single bend of the knee. No, he's not a rhino, not a miracle. In fact, he may look like you or me. Don't be fooled. Those are not his claws, they are perfectly normal nails, like yours, nor are those hooves, no. They are his size eight, possibly size nine shoes. He's less heavy than you think, no, not a ton, just the weight of an ordinary man, say 70 or 80 kilos. Is that his horn? No. It's a smug little snub little nose. And yes, he might catch a cold, like you and I. He might even bleed. When he takes his seat, he doesn't descend from heaven. On a cloud, no. He climbs up on our shoulders, yours and mine, and sits in the saddle of time, dangling his legs. Two legs, not six. If you care to check, his mirror loves him. He loves his mirror. The love is mutual. He adores the law. Any house he burns, anyone he kills, any massacre he orders is done in full accordance with the law. Don't insult your own intelligence by hoping. Let that flame flicker, die, and unaccountably flicker again while he's in charge. He regards even his tantrums as a sign of strength. He would prefer us to be as water, to see us stagnating at the bottom of the cup. We must bow when he pours us out, not allowing a word to escape, and yet when we behaved like water, as he intended, he raised his hands in mute appeal, astonished to be drowning. Wonderful. Um, I would like to uh, uh, introduce Tara Bergin, uh, who uh, we have lots of uh, uh, poet translators who come from Ireland. Maybe it is because the Irish language is so 
poetic. Um, so, uh, Tara, you translated uh, a um, poem from one of our Western um, uh, poets, namely Angelica Freitas, from the Portuguese. Uh, and I would like to, um, you to read that while um, uh, Claire again will share her screen and let the Portuguese text um, roll while you are reading. And then afterwards, uh, I would like to take the, the um, charge as, as host and presenter and ask the two of you, George and Tara, um, a question from one of our audience about how you uh, dealt with certain aspects of translating uh, the, the, uh, the, or giving us a poetic version of the original. But first, Tara, if you could read uh, Angelica's The Peacock on the Roof. It flies. It's up there on the roof of the hostel. Extraordinary. And at the same time, a bird flying. It's just, I didn't know. I don't know how. I'm on a silent meditation retreat. 10 days of peacocks and no one speaks. My knees ache from sitting cross-legged on the floor. But each day at break, we get the reward, a peacock that opens out its tail while we all silently open our mouths. Power and glory, I do not know you. At first, I think it is a cat in pain. It has all its eyes open, but we are told to keep all our eyes closed. There's the sound of breathing, sneezing, the peacock screaming, and then the call to prayer from the mosques, and I cry. I don't know why, but I cry. On the last day, one woman finds a feather with an eye. She's going to take it home and keep it in a sacred book. Years from now, it will remind her of the peacock on the roof, its tail spread bright, and of the 40 silent women who didn't know that much about themselves or the mechanics of flight. Wonderful. Um, I have a question from one of our audience uh, who happens to be um, uh, a formidable editor uh, herself. Um, so, um, because she edited actually my book, so uh, she must be formidable. Um, could you, um, could the translators, uh, actually, she just came back and said, um, uh, if, uh, Claire, could you unmute Cordelia Borchardt, please? And then she can ask the question uh, herself. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Well, wonderful to be uh, with you virtually. And I would like to ask the poets, um, because translator seems a bit of a paltry term, uh, to say something about how they addressed uh, the prosodic aspects of those poems. I mean, the rhythm, the rhyme of the original, and how, I mean, obviously it's not something that you can just translate verbatim. How do you deal with what you can um, transform and transmit and what you have to lose? So, um, uh, George or Tara, do you want to answer that question? Well, I am used to translating from the Hungarian. And when I do that, of course, I can hear it. Um, I understand it. And I do try to respond in kind. With this, it was uh, very different. Um, basically, I had a literal version um, provided by Khaled al -Jibaili. Um and I was working with a literal version and then presenting versions of it back. And then he would respond to my versions. I can't read Arabic. So there's, and I did not hear the poem being read aloud. So I wasn't sure how it sounded. Um, the main problem for me 
was to understand the register, the tone, um, the imagery of it, um, and especially, I suppose, to um, respond to the nature of the irony that is at the heart of the poem. Wonderful. Um, Tara, do you want to add something to, to this? Yeah, well, it, first of all, I was the same in, in the sense that tone was really important. I don't speak Portuguese, uh, but at least I could, I could pretend, I, you know, to sound it out. So I was trying to get some sense of the sound. Uh, but the main thing I, I needed was tone. And so I had to, I got a literal translation, a, a brilliant literal translation from, by Hilary Kaplan. And, uh, but I had to write to her to ask her what the tone was because it seemed to be conversational. There didn't seem to be rhyme uh, or kind of even any sense of a particular rhythm. So I was, uh, you know, I needed to find that out. And she said, yeah, it's, it's conversational. So that, that was a starting point. But um, loads of, loads of uh, tiny things were, were really hard to get right. And in fact, I have some, um, some of my rough drafts, which I can show you if I, if I press, um, no, I can't do a, 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 um, a share screen because it's being done by the host. But um, maybe I can put some on the website to show you because little That's things great. like... Yep. Yeah, I played around with... Um, I noticed when I look at my drafts, of which there are millions, like maybe, I don't know, 30 or something, tiny things like I started off calling the peacock a he. So for ages it was he. And I thought that would maybe capture some of the tension between the women uh, and the peacock but uh, finally I, I, I went back to it because it became too confusing to have the pronoun he and the other thing that when I looked through my drafts I noticed that uh, I found really hard to get right was that um, was the phrase that I en ended up rendering as power and glory uh, because if you look at the original it's it's like literally uh, majes majesty and I couldn't bring myself to use that for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, your majesty or something. So I just thought I can't. So I, I started to, you know, I sort of played around with that a bit. Um, and what re this is the last thing I'll say on this, but um, what really surprised me is I had, like, I'm not a translator at all. And, um, uh, but I've read a lot about translation. I've studied it as, a, as an idea. And I had loads of beliefs and uh, uh, theories about it. And I just uh, forgot all of those when I was actually doing the practical work. Um, whereas I would have gone, but thought I would do a very faithful translation. I found myself, I kept straying from that. So I, I was really surprised by the difference between the practice and the theory. Uh, and Nujum, you, um, you actually hinted uh, at the fact that um, uh, <laughs> Uh, Dorian uh, actually made you sound much more lyrical than um, uh, you you uh, in, intended at the beginning. Um, but uh, uh, it's, we listened to your Arabic, and it sounded like very lyrical and very beautiful. And very, so uh, maybe. Um, the, the Irish poet and uh, the Arabic poet uh, joined in the music uh, of poetry um, uh, and it both sounded wonderful to us. Um, but Nujum, maybe uh, you want to comment on that as I well. Think, you know, I write, I write a, a free verse uh, and maybe there is the inner rhythm inside my work, but uh, uh, you know, uh, Lorian, um, maybe because of the impact of, uh, of Goethe, Goethe's work itself, which is very lyrical, which is very uh, rhythmic, uh, she felt that it, this has to be reflected, that the rhythm has to be reflected, or the lyrical side has to be reflected in the poem that is dedicated to Zuleikha and, uh, and Hatem. Uh, but uh, honestly speaking, you know, I'm not a big fan of, of uh, rhythm or, uh, or, of, or the lyrical poetry. Uh, and I, I consider this the karma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Gandra, we have let you wait uh, in the background so long, uh, but uh, I think it is uh, fantastic to, to, to culminate um, uh, this uh, uh, poetry part uh, here with you uh, reading your um, poem in the original Turkish, and then we will um, uh, uh, again uh, uh, show uh, the um, Joe uh, Shapcott's uh, poetic translation while you're reading the uh, poetry. Um, and I think we even have a recording of Joe reading. So maybe you can comment afterwards, as I know that you are fluent in both languages, um, on whether you think Joe got it right as far as the rhythm and the rhyme is uh, concerned. But first, I think we should hear the original Turkish. Okay, then. I want to say something, but yes, oh, afterwards. Please, please, please keeping that. No, no, so, uh, I don't, uh, please say whatever you, uh, you have on your mind because uh, you have been patiently waiting in the background, so please. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a real pleasure to hear all these uh, wonderful, inspiring, rich voices and poems. I'm very happy. And sometimes uh, backgrounds are so poetic. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of being uh, in this rich, inspiring and lyrical dialogue with all these brilliant poets, both in Zoom and, of course, in our great anthology, A New Divan. So I really want to say thank you, Barbara. Uh, thank you, Bill, Claire and other people who are at the background of Ginkgo, of course, and all the translators who made a great uh, contribution to this anthology. Thanks to these respected translators, uh, my voice uh, will be now with you. Gölgenin verdiği bir cinnet vardı. Tattım. Olmadım deyince olunuyor değil. Sevgilim, beni götürme geceleri, beni en çok eve, en çok geceleri. Sandığımı deş, harmanımı yak, yollara düşür. Bendeki taşra geniş odalara alışık değil. Sana bunları hep tek tek, zemberekten birer birer geçirerek. Sevgilim, Beni bağışla geceleri, en çok geceleri. Bırak oyalansın o aç kalabalık dansımda. Gövdem kederden bir tabanca. Üstünde patlamaz değil. Götürme beni o apansız kapana. Ev dediğin ne ki kaçtığımın yanında. Sevgilim, beni o uzun masalara, o şık salonlara... Sevgilim, beni gündüzlerden kolla. Ölülerin sağlığından geç. Nein, nein. Nein, ich hab die hier nur da. Sorry, somebody has not un unmuted. Uh, please unmute yourself. So to let Ganja continue. Sorry. Okay. Sevgilim beni o uzun masalara, o şık salonlara, sevgilim beni gündüzlerden kolla. Ölülerin sazlığından geçir annenin yanağından. Çorabı kaçık kızlar zaten sabahın değil. Sevgilim dinle beni geceleri, en çok geceleri. Zaten nasıl akar bu dilimdeki pıtraklı, çoklu, ayazlı. Bendeki ses öylesine değil. Sevgilim, beni şaraba yatır geceleri. Korkularından yoğunt, yoksulluğundan damıt. Beni süsenlere söyle, Yaseminlere beni. 
Beni semazenlere en çok, beni en çok geceleri. Sevgilim, beni dünya say, bir üzümden soy. Pergelin döndüğü bizden değil. Seni durmadan çarptığım o ağrıyı unut. Olduğu yerde kalsın uzak, onu unut. Bir elma olup bir sokak ağzında, kahkaha olup patlamak kulaklarında. Sevgilim, sen benim sesimden geçtin sularla. Yollarda düşürdüğün oysa cebinden değil. Öylece duran saksıda bekleyiş ne ki benim tozumun yanında. Düğmenin çözülüşüdür anlam. Sözdür. Kime vursa öldürür. Sevgilim, eğil de bir bak bana. Yanına kıvrıldığın çoktur senden değil. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, this is um, uh, actually going back to hearing the the original before you translating, uh, uh, before you render it in English, is um, a recurring question in um, in our chat. So we'll come back to that um, uh, later. But maybe we should hear Joe Shapcott read. Um, uh, and then, Gonja, you have to comment on whether she got it right. Sure. Claire, can Please. you run the, the, um, the recording? Yeah. The shadows were so insane, I tasted them and spoke them, though I said I wouldn't. Love, never take me home again. Least of all to that house, and especially not at night. Empty my bottom drawer, incinerate my garden, fling me out like the hick I am, so awkward in your tall ancestral halls, which coil into each other, into you, into time. Love, forgive me at night, most of all at night. Let me go back to the dance, the crowd. My body is a gun made of sorrow, aimed at you. Don't snag me into your trap. This is nothing compared to what I ran from. Love, save me from those mornings, from those long tables, those elegant rooms. You could go swimming in the marshes of death and still dive back freely into those mornings with the approval of your mother's fine cheekbone, me in my holy tights, stumbling through breakfast. Love, listen to me at night, most of all at night, so I can let these words fall from my tongue, prickly threads of sound, nothing like my voice. Love, night times, lay me down on a bed of wine, distilled from your poverty, poured from your fears. Tell the freesias and jasmines about me, and most of all, tell the dervishes, especially at night. Love, see a world in me, a peeled grape. Ignore the spinning machinery outside. Forget the pain I keep pressing on you. Let it rest, let it fade into the distance. Catch an apple, a burst of street talk, a cat call, an explosion of laughter in your ear. Love, you stream through my voice like water. What you've dropped didn't fall from your pockets. Waiting, I've gathered more dust than an undisturbed vase. There is meaning in an undone button. It is words which kill their targets. Love, lean into me, look at me. You touch me, but you left ages ago. Even water's too busy to flow with me. No one's coming to put a stop to the night to let morning in. So 
So, Gunja, what do you say? Um, has Joe uh, capt captured both the the poem as well as the tone and the rhythm of your uh, original Turkish poem? Uh, actually, I have to say, Claire uh, Roberts asked me great questions uh, in general, uh, but most of them are on translation. And uh, it has just newly published in the new Ginkgo uh, website, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, I shared my views in a very detailed way there. Maybe if uh, there are some audiences who are really interested, uh, they can also read uh, the interview if they like. Uh, I myself, uh, a translator, now I'm working on the collected poems of Sylvia Platt. I'm translating her poems into Turkish and I know uh, how challenging translation, poetry translation is. So, uh, but there is one thing uh, I really understand the quality of the translation, how it would be. Uh, this is the questions of the translator. While uh, they first, when, when, when they first, um, you know, touched you, uh, the questions really tell, tell, tell that the quality uh, of the translation. Because when I uh, got the uh, questions of Morin Freely and Özge Çallı Spike, they did the bridge translation, uh, the questions are really very uh, into the poem. It, it, they, they show me that they really understand the poem, the main intention of the poet persona there, the tone of the poem, even double meanings. There are many double meanings, uh, and I'm afraid sometimes the translator uh, ha has, have, has to choose something. And there is, of course, uh, some difference between uh, two languages. And at the end, Joe Shapcott's work is really, I, I, I love it because um, for me, Joe Shapcott is a very uh, special poet. So, uh, uh, and I'm very happy to uh, hear, to, to read her name uh, with my own poetry. And this repetitive parts uh also help maybe to catch the tone in the target language as well and the poet persona there uh in english i think it is about the gender pronouns it is more obvious that the poet persona is a uh, female uh but she's uh, calling someone as my love Normally in Turkish, we don't know the gender. Uh, but yes, here in English, we have to know. So this is a very basic difference when we are translated into other languages. Yes. And uh, we, I mean, Bill and I wanted to make sure that the, the English is also a, a poem in its own right. Um, it's a, a version of your um, original, but it, it was meant to uh, work in its own right. Um, uh, and in the printed edition, it's face to face, so you can, it's, it, it's equal billing. Um, but what the website can offer now in addition is that we actually also reveal the bridge translations that made this possible. Um, so this is extra material which is on the, the website as well as the recordings which make it uh, so much more enjoyable that you can actually hear um, uh, the tone of the original. Um, exactly. This is, this is uh, something in its own and I would really, one day, I, I don't know, but I would really hear about the comments of the audience in English. Thank you well, a lot for giving me a chance. That is 
what hopefully um, uh, uh, we can offer. Uh, so actually that um, brings me very nicely to um, uh, what Claire and I wanted to do now uh, is to show off this website uh, a little bit. You have already got a taster um, uh, of it um, uh, while we were doing this event, uh, but now we want to show you the various features um, uh, of uh, newdevan.org.uk, uh, which will hopefully not only be a legacy, but also a resource for uh, future Devans. Um, uh, so you will, of course, find there um, uh, all the poets uh, and the poems and uh, the poets and uh, uh, as well as... Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry about this. Terribly sorry. Can you still hear me? Um, God, I've lost you, but never mind. <laughs> this is typical. <laughs> I mean, that... The, the host herself gets a telephone call in the middle of, um, um, I had put my phone on mute, I promise you. Uh, anyway, never mind. Uh, so back to the website. The, the, um, uh, there is um, uh, lots, lots of information about the individual uh, poems, uh, as well as the poets, but on the poems we have put both the original as well as the translation, plus additional texts, which are the bridge translations, uh, which we talked about. And uh, then in the, uh, ex uh, so we are indebted and in awe of these literal translators uh, that provided this information that made the poetic versions possible. And, um, it, in addition to that, under the explore section, uh, you find podcasts of um, uh, the poets reading their poems out loud. Uh, so to give you an idea of uh, the, the tone. And um, I hope you all agree that it's listening to, uh, to music um, uh, if you listen to the original being read by the poets. And uh, also in the explore section are um, uh, some recordings of past events of um, our um, uh, tour last year, um, uh, but also including some um, uh, previous events, uh, including a wonderful um, uh, recording of Mahmoud Dolatabadi talking about Hafez and Goethe at the launch event um, uh, of um, when we set off on en route to a new divan. Uh, and uh, th there he is in, with his wonderful moustache. And if you listen to that, please do. Um, you hear this booming, wonderful um, Persian um, uh, poet and writer um, uh, who did this marvellous recording. Uh, and it has English subtitles, so you get both his wonderful voice as well as, as um, uh, what he says. Then uh, under the press um, uh, button, uh, you have um, all sorts of uh, uh, reviews for uh, the event, but also um, a fantastic um, uh, program, which the um, uh, BBC World Service produced of, uh, about the New Divan festival in Berlin last November. And uh, in the Engage, um, uh, last but definitely not least, uh, there is Engage. And this uh, is uh, a treasure trove of interviews, as Gönja mentioned, the, the um, interview with, with her, um, as well as uh, all the essays that we included in the new divan. Uh, and uh, other interesting bits and pieces. For example, it includes the English translation, thanks to Peter Lewis, and really thank you, Peter, uh, for a wonderful translation of Stefan Weidner's keynote at this uh, New Divan Festival in Berlin uh, on the Oriental question, an attempt to reconcile um, Goethe and... No, go away. 
um, um, uh, the, um, uh, the Oriental question, an attempt to reconcile Goethe and Edward Said. It was an excellent keynote, and I highly recommend uh, that you read the PDF um, uh, uh, of it uh, at your leisure. You will also find uh, um, to, um, a link to where you can actually buy both a new Devan and Eric Ormsby's new annotated translation of the West Eastern Devan, which uh, we published in a bilingual edition at the same time as a new Devan. Both are currently discounted at 30% off. Um, yes, I know this is a shameless publisher's plug, but uh, as my late truly beloved always used to say a book is only published when it's sold uh, so here we go but perhaps most importantly and particularly because at the end of the notes and essays for a better understanding of the west eastern divan goethe expressed the hope that other divans would be attempted in the future and notwithstanding the fact that he probably was talking about himself uh, producing a new divan, uh, we have taken him up on his challenge. Uh, so, and the new um, website will um, uh, has a page called Get Involved. Um, and uh, this is our invitation to you, our listeners and supporters, and fellow poetry lo lovers to get creative, to respond to um, uh, uh, a, uh, this um, uh, challenge and uh, to contribute something which celebrates the art of poetry, translation, and the importance of dialogue and friendship across and between cultures. We will be delighted to publish your poems, reflections, and other contributions on this page. And maybe as an example of what we're talking about, uh, sort of to take things further, um, <clears throat> I would ask Bill to uh, tell us something about something which uh, he's working on um, uh, with uh, the uh, Lancaster Lit Fest, um, which will uh, be um, uh, a, a spin on what we attempted uh, last year. So Bill, over to you. Can you tell us something about this project? Yes, well, thank you. Um, at the beginning of this year, the Lancaster Literature Festival had hardly started, but it had to be cancelled for the reason that so many other events and um, other things had to be cancelled in March because of the coronavirus. But we wanted to, we had planned there to organize a reading where we would invite some of the poets who live in the north of England, who were translators, like Tara Bergen, Sean O'Brien, and Paul Farley, who lives in Lancaster, to come and read with members of the um, asylum seeker and refugee community of Lancaster so that we would have a Palestinian, um, a young Palestinian woman would be reading Murid Barghouti. Um, someone from Iran would be reading Fatima Sham's wonderful poem, Electrocardiogram. And um, somebody who teaches at the university would be reading um, Gonja's poem. And then we would, the, the English poems would be read either by the poets who, who compose them, or by members of our audience. So as an active engagement with our audience, but with the book, and, and trying to bring the idea of it alive in another place entirely, Lancaster, um, we were then absolutely dis so disappointed when it wasn't possible to go through with it. But thanks to Ginkgo's encouragement and the fact we've all learned how to use Zoom and recording apps, we are going to record um, an extended reading of about 75 minutes, including a Q&A and some discussion, um, and present it, if you like, as a podcast, or more, almost like a radio program. 
and that will be available at the end of August, beginning of September. We're in the middle of recording now, and we will be editing in the rest of the summer, and then we will present that podcast, if you like, in lieu of the event we weren't able to hold. So thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, that is a fantastic um, uh, way of, of actually uh, sh showing that this is an ongoing dialogue. And this was the whole point of the website, that we wanted to continue this uh, project uh, in a way. Um, is, um, uh, we have a, uh, uh, some questions. There's one from, um, um, he, is, he or she is hiding behind Galaxy Node 4. Um, uh, as uh, this is um, a, a, a question to you, Murid. Um, uh, so, can you read a little bit more of his wonderful poetry? So, you obviously have uh, a fan. Galaxy of <laughs> Four is wants to hear more from you, <laughs> especially. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe maybe you can say uh, something about um, uh, when George and you met. Um, uh, you obviously bounced off each other so wonderfully. So um, maybe you and George could come back um, uh, now uh, at this point as well. Well, uh, thank you, Barbara. Uh, am I supposed to read uh, some poetry now, or just to talk to uh, George that, or to thank? Uh, a lovely, uh, lovely uh, addition, but I can't uh, provi uh, provide an instantaneous translator. So uh, you have to tell us something about what you're reading. Yeah, uh, uh, I will read two short. I mean, a very short. Uh, A very short text. Uh, it says it's uh, about the magic lantern of Aladdin. Wonderful. The magic lamp. قال المصباح السحري للولد المعدم كذبت كل حكايات الأجداد عليك. الأمنية الكبرى ليست في القمقم لم تعطى يدين لتفرك مصباحا سحريا وتنام استيقظ كي تحلم This is the text I, I will make some immediate, uh, immediate translation if I can Wonderful <laughs> The magic lantern said to the poor boy All the stories of the of the forefathers lied to you. The great wish is not in the lantern. You were not given two hands to rub a magic lantern and go to sleep. Wake up and dream. Ah, wake up and dream. How fantastic. What a, um, uh, a last line of a poem. Thank you, Maurit. Um, now, there, there is a question which we re uh, received ahead of time uh, to yeah. Karen Leader, who is one of our uh, most famous literary, trans uh, literary translators from the German. Karen, are you with us? To Yes, she is. So then um, I the uh, the the question to you is we had a question come in about the role of the bridge or literary translator in this project and i think it's a really important point to explore it in a bit more detail karen leader who is an expert translator from the german joins us uh, this evening and might be well placed to speak on this karen can you ask can i ask you how you feel about bridge translations in general and any particular challenges you encountered while working on this project? 
Uh, oh yes, well thank you. Um, and it's it's wonderful to be part of this um, fantastic evening. Um, I, I think some of the issues have been raised already, um, in a way, in the discussion. Um, uh, but I'll pick up some of them. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's a minefield, I think, um, this idea of bridge translation generally. So, uh, and I think for reasons that everyone will understand. Um, and I think that the role of the bridge translator, you know, is 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 one that's often uh, underestimated. Um, if you've got two mighty strong poets and there's this little bridge translator in between, there's a there's a tendency for them to get overlooked. Um, but I suppose I'd like to speak instead. So it's a political issue, which I'm sure everyone will have opinions about. But I'd like to talk about the practicalities, really. Uh, I'm not sure that there is such a thing as a neutral, transparent translation, because always you're making choices. You're uh, filtering the original poem through your own experience and your own knowledge and your own language. Um, and so already there are places where you, you are making certain choices. And of course, you can make as many of those visible as, as possible in your uh, notes and, and your version uh, that you pass on to the uh, other half of the dialogue. But there are some of which you're no doubt unconscious as well. Um, and going the other way, in a sense, I translated three poems by Doris Grunbein, who is a poet I know very well. Um, and I recognized... Um, references in his poem to other of his essays, just words that gain a different weight if you know the other essays um, and other poems. Um, and there again, I was, I was perplexed as to how much of that I could transport in my comments, um, becoming like a lecturer on the poet, which of course you don't want. But of course it meant that I would choose one word to translate while signalling some other points. Um, Whereas somebody else coming with a different knowledge of Grunbein might have chosen something different. So there's just that extra uh, kind of level of, of reference um, to, to be got. Um, and then finally, I uh, translated Doers, whom I know very well, for uh, Matthew Sweeney, um, who I knew a little, um, but sadly um, died just after he'd um, done this version. Uh, and so I never got to talk to him, which I would have really welcomed. Um, partly because I think um, even at its most basic level, a, a bridge like this is also has elements of a poem in it. And it's a kind of embodied thing in a way. Um, and I noticed that Matthew took some parts, you know, fairly literally. And I don't mean that as a, as, a, uh, as a criticism in any way. It's just that sometimes by chance I'd struck exactly the right note for Doers and for Matthew. Um, but it is a kind of embodied thing, which is partly yours as well. Um, and so I would have welcomed the chance to speak it. We, we've already raised that um, earlier about the importance of being able to read and being able to sort of talk and tone of voice would, would imply so much in discussing the poem, but we never got that chance. And so he just got my bald notes and my bald literal, which in a way is only half of the, the thing. So I guess those are the three points I really wanted to make um, about it. And I'm sure everybody will have had a different experience. Um, but it is a strange business, and I often think a bridge translator has to be as much like a chameleon as possible, sort of as, as invisible as possible. But in fact, of course, one never is truly invisible in a translation. Thank you, Karen. That, that is really um, uh, a wonderful answer to a question. And we also had a, a question on um, to Stefan Weidner. Um, uh, the... Um, about the place there is for Goethe, uh, Goethe's West Eastern Divan and his idea of the Orient in today's post saidian world. Um, uh, Stefan, of course, um, uh, was one of our essays in the a New Divan, and um, he also gave, uh, did the keynote at our festival in Berlin on this subject. So I think over to Stefan. If Stefan, are you there? Um, no, he's not. <clears throat> right. Okay. Well, um, then I'm afraid I can only um, uh, say to the person who, who posed that question, please read the keynote which we have put um, uh, on the website as a PDF. So it, it will answer all your questions. Um, uh, and I think this is um, 
Uh, Claire, have we got any other questions uh, from the audience tonight? Um, we do have a couple, but perhaps we could um, direct them. Quite a few of them are for Mourid. Um, right. Uh, Mourid, um, you will um, have to do a little bit of homework after this session, so um, uh, uh, you can answer the questions directly. If, uh, yes, please. <laughs> uh, but uh, then I uh, only have the, the wonderful uh, task of saying a huge, huge thank you uh, to, first of all, um, to um, uh, the Arts Council uh, who supported the publication of A New Divan to the Jan Michalski Foundation who supported the, uh, the New Divan tour and this website. Uh, thank you, Vera and uh, the Jan Michalski Foundation. All, uh, of course, my main thank you is to all the contributors, our poets, translators, essayists, many of whom joined us from all over the world uh, tonight. Um, all our advisors to the projects. Um, uh, Bill already mentioned uh, Margaret Obank and Samuel Shannon of Banipal, Michael Schmidt of Karkenet, the German poet Joachim Zatoyas, Narges Falzad, of course, who um, appears in, wears many hats uh, in this project um, and is with us uh, to, tonight, Sasha Dachter, and many, many more. And of course, I want to thank my co-editor, Bill Swainson, and you, uh, our audience tonight. On behalf of the entire team at Ginkgo, thank you for your involvement, for supporting us at this strange time. We are delighted that you were with us uh, tonight and that we could connect at least virtually, two-dimensionally, and we wish you a very enjoyable rest of the evening. Thank you.